it took me a lot of time to tab this song out. Tom, Nathan. Ridiculously excited today to bring you Easy Now by Joan Shelley and her guitarist Nathan Salzberg. Wow. Wow. If you guys don't know Nathan, check out his work. He has his own solo records, plays with Joan Shelley. What a masterful finger picker this guy is. He also runs the um, Alan Lomax digital archive, which is super cool. So clearly he knows his guitar history. This kid... Not kid. This man, amazing player. Go check out his work. You will be blown away. Tom Honor sponsored this song, so go to mikesmusicmethod.com. You can sponsor the next song. Everyone thank Tom for not only sponsoring this tune, but for, for turning me on to Nathan Salzberg, and hopefully I can spread this guy's talent with you all. Tom, I apologize. You requested this song a long time ago. I tried to email you, Tom, but I couldn't, I don't know where you sponsored this. I, I couldn't find your email, so I apologize. But he gave me this song and I fell in love with it and I got about halfway through tabbing it out before I got burnt out because holy cow, this is not a beginner piece for those new to Mike's music method. Go to the Travis Picking playlist, do a lot of those songs first. I've got 200, almost 200 tutorials here. Don't start with this one if you're a finger picker. It is really hard. I've warned you, you've been warned. This song is in double drop D, so both E strings drop a whole step to D and capo on the second fret. Now, by the end of this tune, you're gonna you're just gonna be enraged because it's gonna take you forever, but then you'll encounter a great satisfaction and sense of joy, and you'll be a much, much better player after learning this song. He does this thing called I call it the Nathan Roll, the Salzburg, the Salzburg roll, actually, that sounds way cooler. Um, the Salzburg roll is in here. There's tons of hammer-offs and hammer-ons and pull-offs and be -doo -dee -doo -doo -doo, like daisy chained on top of each other. He reminds me a lot actually of Gillian Welsh's, Welsh's husband who plays guitar for her. Just like excellent Travis picking, but he interweaves like these little melodic, almost lead playing guitar lines despite still holding down the entire rhythm section. So I've rambled enough. I hope I warned you that it's difficult, but I hope I excited you because it's unbelievably beautiful. So just go listen to the song, listen to some Nathan, of some of Nathan's stuff, and then come back here because you're going to go, wow, can I play like that? I want to learn one of these guys' songs. He's unbelievable. Without further ado, let's do the song. One little further ado. The timestamps are down below. They're your best friends. Do not rush this tune. Maybe you're learning two measures at a time. Learn it before you practice it. Take that to heart. I, I really just wish I could impart that into your brain. Learn the thing. So go as slow as possible until you know exactly what fingers and motions to execute before you actually start practicing it to tempo. That's what we do here at Mike's Music Method. I tab these tunes out. I bring them to you measure by measure. Now at the end of this video are slow run-throughs. So maybe you'll learn half the intro and jump to the end. Slow run-through intro. And you'll practice that with me. Slow and steady. Comment down below. I love to see how you're progressing. I love to encourage you. And that's it. Let's learn this song together. Nathan, if you ever watch this video, give me a call. Send me an email. How, do you, how are you doing this stuff, man? Give us some of your tricks, man. Throw a dog a bone. A quick note on tuning. We are in double drop D. That means your E is down to a D and your high E is down to a D. Double drop D. Now when you have the capo on the second fret, 
You always want to retune it because you get capo pinch a little bit. So I've got E. That's a B. Do it together here. Another E. An A. Should be a C sharp. And then back to on top another E. And we're ready to rock and roll. Guys, slow and steady, as I said, this is a heck of a song. All right, so we start on a D chord, and this shouldn't trip us up too much. Now the thumb in this first measure, straightforward, just going from six to four here. On the second beat, I'm pinching um, the second and third string with my pointer in my middle. So thumb alone, and then I'm hitting four, three, and two here. Thumb, pointer, middle. to the thumb then right after that I'm snagging the high string so I'm doing six and then I'm using my ring finger now guys you can jump that middle finger around I wouldn't recommend it that's gonna be pretty darn difficult so this is gonna be one where you're really gonna develop that ring finger I suppose you could just use your middle finger but it's gonna be a lot of movement you know what Nathan's doing here is definitely hybrid between your classic Travis picking folk stuff and classical style Another thing to note, you could probably pull this off doing the D normally, but I'm actually barring it like this because we're gonna get to the fourth fret in a second. We need to pull off, and it's way easier when I'm doing this, but I suppose this way's fine too. But experiment what's better for your hand. So we had that thumb, big pinch, thumb, and. So again, the strings are six, four, three, and two together. Then it's six, one, and that one's with the ring finger. And this is really cool. This is, man, Nathan, you can play, man. Hats off. So what we're doing here is this really quick roll. We have like thumb and then two 16th notes. So I'm doing four, then pointer, middle. And you want to get them all ready there so that you can just roll them, right? I'm kind of touching them all down with my right hand here. So that way they're already in place and I can just quickly roll them. So the whole measure together here, three, four three four cool so if you're having trouble with that end of measure one because of the speed i would really isolate it because it is a hard trick so that's just the end of measure one and if you're counting numbers it's one two three four and I know as it's written, it's probably more like one and two and a 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 one. Measure two, we're gonna pinch six and one. And there's where I'm hammering on to the fourth fret. Now, if I was holding down the D chord, I could do that, but it's not fun. I don't find that fun at all. <laughs> so I'm barring the D like this, right? Two is on, you know, I'm barring it then adding that uh, middle finger to get the third fret. Then you can either pull off with the pinky or even your ring. So I'm pinching six and, or it's a hammer on here, but sometimes it's a pull off. Got a hammer on, pinching six and one, hammering on from two to four. Thumb hops to the fourth string. And then I'm gonna lift that melody note up. Or sorry. And you can actually lift the whole chord there. So I got the pinch. six and one, hammer, thumb on four, ring finger on one. And then the second half of the measure here, I'm hammering on the fifth string, open to two. And then my thumb's hitting the fourth string right after that. So the whole measure nice and slow, three, four. And you might think, oh, Mike, we don't need to hold down the whole D chord. You kind of do, because we just came out of that quick little roll. So you're gonna be in that D chord position for that hammer on. But then you can lift the whole chord here when you hit that top string. Let's do one and two together. Three, four. It's all right.
already so beautiful. Measure three, this is really cool. We're gonna go to the seventh fret. Um, it's actually the ninth fret, but seven up from the capo. And I got my ring finger on seven, and then my, we skip a string, and then I do seven on the third string as well with my middle finger. So I got seven and seven on the first and third string. And here's the measure. So got my thumbs easy, just going back and forth from six and four as usual. And what I'm doing with the other ones, I got six alone, then I'm gonna pinch. And here it's hard to tell. He's definitely hitting four and one, but feel free to also hit the second string. I'm getting a bigger, nice ringier kind of pinch up on top when I do that. So six, and then I'm doing one, two, and four at the same time. And I suppose you could pivot middle and, and um, pointer there. You don't have to do the ring finger, it's your call. I'm just kind of like keeping them on these three strings, but you can pivot these two if it's that much easier for you. So after that, six, then the big pinch. Then I'm doing six, one, four with my thumb, and then pointer middle again. So it looks like the end of measure one there. So the end of that measure again, six, one, thumb on four. Then I do a quick pointer. Man, I can't think today. Pointer middle on the third and second string. Now do yourself a favor, after we do that little um, run there, that quick one, feel free to cheat and release that ring finger. You know, if you want to be awesome, you'll hold that ring finger down from that little roll. But it's kind of hard to keep it pinned down and do all these little pull-offs here. Feel free to lift it up so you can just focus on that strength of the pull-offs. So let's do this slow, measure four. What the pull-offs are, without doing the thumb yet, we're pulling off seven to five on the first string. Then on the second string, we're doing seven to open. Then I'm hammering open to five on the first string. Then pulling off seven to open again on the second. So it's always a seven open pull-off on the second. Seven, five, seven open, open five, seven open. So awesome. Now remember for pull-offs, you're tugging down a little bit to get it taut, to get the string taut, and then when you release it, it's going to sound a lot better if you spend a moment getting it a little bit taut, that'll get it to sing a bit louder as opposed to this, where I'm just lifting. That sounds super weak. I need to tug down. Not so much that you're pulling the thing off, but just momentarily tug down before letting go of it. It's like a, you're just like flicking it down. And with the thumb, the whole time it's doing six to four. So you pinch uh, six and one for the pull off, seven to five. And I'm pinching four and two here for that one, pinching four and two. And I'm going back to six and one for the hammer on. Back to four and two for the pull off. And again, you can do middle always on the top string, pointer always on the second if you're not good with the ring finger. All together now, three, four. So cool. And this is the kind of stuff that whew, makes Nathan unique. He is really clever with all this stuff. And now we're in measure five, very similar to measure one, except the only difference is at the beginning, instead of just doing the thumb, we're pinching six and one together. And that looks the same. So what I'm doing there is I'm letting that pinch ring out a bit. And then at first I'm just planning pointer and um, middle here. So that, that, that open E can ring for a second. Then I'm dropping the pointer down to get that second fret. And I believe measure six is exactly the same as measure two. 
Good news, seven, eight is the same as three and four. Nine and 10 are the same as five and six. So note here in measure 11, it basically is the same as measure one and what we've done before. But I can't tell. Sometimes I feel like there's a different melody note of that D chord ringing out. So in the, B, oh, in the intro, I just add the second string as the highest note there. And for some reason, occasionally I feel like I'm hearing it being the higher one. So I'm just picking it different with my right hand instead of doing four, three, two on the pinch. Here I'm doing four, three, and one with my ring finger. Otherwise it's the same. The donation pitch. If you're this far in the video, you know, you know how difficult this song has been. Imagine me sitting there with headphones on in the, in the dark, like a blind man trying to figure out what the heck Nathan was doing. I feel great. It's a, this, song, this song was a great sense of accomplishment for me. Really hard. I was almost gave up on trying to tab it out, but I kept grinding it out, and I think I did a darn good job. Again, Nathan, if you're out there, I'd love to chat with you. But anyways, this is where the donation pitch is. It, you know how hard this song is. You know how long it took me to tab out. So I'm asking the value for value model. What is this tab worth? What is this learn, learning this song worth to you? Maybe it's worth a hundred bucks. I mean, this is a complicated song. Maybe if it did for you what it did for me, a hundred bucks. <laughs> but maybe it's 20 bucks. I don't know. Maybe you're giving Mike's music method five bucks a month. That's this whole value for value model. I have no idea what my labor is worth, but I ask you to really consider what it's worth. It's a lot of my time, talent, and treasure goes into this channel, and I'm just asking for you guys to support it. And that's how I'm able to keep these tabs free for everybody. I have nothing behind a paywall, so people who don't have, um, who can't financially um, prioritize music in their life right now, they can still get access to this awesome finger picking stuff, and that's the main goal here at Mike's Music Method. But of course, those of you who can donate, it's the honor system. Please contribute. It buys me time to focus on this channel. It's not a small effort. I probably spend, no joke, probably 20 plus hours a week on this channel on top of my job, you know, actual job teaching music. So it is an incredible labor, certainly a labor of love. I don't want to sound like I'm whining, but the only way this channel continues, continues to grow is if you guys buy me more time by donating or at the very least send me a really encouraging email those also go a long way. Onward with the tune. 12 we've seen before, not gonna go over it. And then 13, we start the verse. So that was the intro. Down below I have timestamps. Jump to the end of this video, go through it. I'll do slow run-throughs at the end. Slow run-through, intro, spend some time there before you move on. All right, let's do the verse where Jones starts singing. So 13 and 14 we've seen before. out of practice. I could tell it's pretty weak. It's not, that's not how I want it to sound. It could be cleaner. But anyways, we all need some work there. Measure 15, we got a B minor chord. And it's just normal B minor because we're not hitting the two E strings that we down tuned. So that chord stays the same. And if, I hope you know your B minor bar chord. I'm not going to teach it to you. Look it up. Um, if you're trying to do this song and you don't know what a B minor bar chord is, holy cow, hats off to you. Because that's a, a lofty goal here. Picking pattern. Thumb is on five. I'm gonna pinch four and two, and I'm pulling off that middle finger. So the three ends up being a two on the second string there. So I got thumb, thumb middle with the pull off. Then second half of the measure is thumb, pointer, thumb, and those strings are fifth, third, fourth, whole measure, three, four. Really beautiful. That uh, ninth in there, right? There, second. And then this measure is great, measure 16. Such awesome movement on an A chord that only Nathan Salzberg does. So we've got an A chord. I'm just barring it because we need all our other fingers. We can't do it this way. Got to do a first finger bar on this A chord. Don't worry about the high E because we don't play that either. So you don't have to get all funny to get it to ring up there. Uh, and what we're doing, pinching five and three, thumb and pointer. And right off the bat, he's hammering onto the fourth fret there. Then we have a pinch on this next beat here on beat two. One and two. What I'm doing there 
is pinching uh, fourth and second with my thumb in my middle. So I got the hammer, then pinch, then I do a hammer on there. So when I pinch that four and two, my middle finger is hammering down to the third fret on the second string. That's the first half of the measure. Then right after that, I'm gonna pull off that, that third fret of hammer and I'm gonna pull off. But the same time I pull off, I call this a compound movement. The same time I pull off, I'm also hitting the fifth string. So I'm not sounding that second string again. I'm only sounding the fifth. So that's ringing out. I'm gonna pull off and hit the fifth string at the same time. So get that real slow. Again. Make sure you can do that before finishing the measure. So then after we do that, we're gonna do a pointer finger on the third string, then thumb does the fourth string to the fourth fret on that string. <laughs> Whole thing slow. Three, four. I missed a hammer. Three, four. Really cool. He's good. Measure 17, we've seen before. So once in a while in measure 18, here it's a little bit different. I'm hearing like an extra little note in there. And guys, it's pretty darn hard to tell because Joan Shelley is also fi finger picking a separate part. So sometimes in the recording, I'm hearing a note and I'm like, how is he doing that? And I'm realizing, oh, I think that's Joan's guitar part. So kind of tricky to figure out. But, but I think this is also Nathan playing this note. Uh... So what I'm hearing is like a hammer on pull off. So he's just adding that extra pull off instead of the normal. We're doing this. That compound movement again. So I'm pinching, got the D chord down with that bar, pinching six and one, hammering on to the fourth fret. Then the moment I play the thumb on the D string, I'm pulling off that fourth fret back to two. So again, pinch with the hammer. Then I'm only playing the thumb here, but I also pull off on that top string. So thumb hits the D as I pull off. Then I lift the whole chord up, hit that open one on the top string, hammer on the fifth to the fourth, just like it usually is. So let's try that slow together. Three, four. So I'm pretty sure every verse, certainly the first one, but I think every time 13 and 18 repeat because jo Joan gives us two stanzas. Then we go to measure 19. Now this isn't, it looks like a crazy chord shape, but because it's drop D, it's basically just like a bar chord on the second fret. Like that's the shape that he's doing, but because we're drop D, we've got to play this fourth fret instead of the second. So it looks like this. We got nothing on the high E. Then on the B string, I got two. On the G, I got three. On the D, I got four. But the problem is, with that fourth fret there, you need to play it with your pinky. Because now my ring finger's gotta go to the fourth fret on that low D. So from the ground up, nothing. Two, three, fourth fret with the pinky. Nothing on the fifth, and then four. Cool, and let's play this. This ending tripped me up and I couldn't figure out what the heck was going on. Took me a lot of time to tab this song out. Tom, Nathan. All right, so let's do this. I got, thumbs pretty easy. It's just six, four, six, four. And I'm doing six, then I'm pinching four and two. Thumb in the middle. Then it's gonna be six, two. Let's do that. And then the thumb again on the fourth string. So six, four and two, six, two. Easy enough, right? But it's these little ending notes that get hard here. So even though we just hit the thumb on that D string, we're gonna play the D string again with the pointer finger. And 
and I kept hearing like, man, it's, it sounds like the same note, but he, but was he really doing the same string? He is because he's doing that little quick attack again, just like he does in the intro, in measure one. So there's two extra added notes. We come off the thumb on the D string. I'm doing the pointer on the D string again, and then my middle finger right underneath it on the G string. So it's just that, that's it. That's all we're adding to the simple pattern. But it feels awkward because right here, my thumb's on the D, but then I have to shift my pointer to get to the D right afterwards. Three, four. Thumb, pointer, right on the same string. Measure 20, same chord shape. We're pinching four and two. Thumb alone on four. So we're pinching six and two. I'm doing thumb and middle there. Thumbs alone. Then right after that alone thumb, I'm immediately doing the high E string. So pinch, thumb and six, two, four, one. I love that dissonance. Thumb goes back to the six string. Then I'm barring, I'm dropping my pointer finger to bar so I can get the second fret on the first string. Now I suppose you could lift the pointer up and just move it down to the second fret. That would probably be fine. But I'm dropping the, since I already have that note from earlier, I'm dropping down that bar so that one can still ring out as long as possible. So my melody is two, oh, two. So again, pinch. just the fingertip. Pretty similar in sound. I would just go with what is easier for your fingers. Not a huge difference sonically. Whew, had to stand up and stretch. My leg was falling asleep there. You guys should do the same. All right, so we did that. Let, let's just hear those two together, right? 19 and 20, um, three, four. Man, it's kind of cold down here. My ring finger is not cooperating. But anyways, to 21. This one's also goofy with the, with the use of open strings and he introduces a three note thumb pattern. So be on the lookout here. What we're doing is we're moving up to five and five. I got five on the low E or, or the D, whatever you wanna call it. And then five on the second string. So the sixth string and the second string, both are fifth frets. Hate to break it to you, you have to play it this way. I know you might wanna do this or this, but you need your ring finger up here and your pinky up here and you'll know why in measure 22. But measure 21, pinching, well, well, thumb pattern first is six, three, four, three, six, three, four, three. So you got a three note pattern. We're gonna pinch six and two. And here I would actually move my pointer down to the second string because my thumb's gonna go to the third. So thumb and pointer, six and two, thumb on three, middle finger on one. Second half of the measure, thumb goes to four, then thumb to three, followed by the pointer finger on the second string, but I lift my pinky in the left hand so it's open at the end. So the ending is all opens, and it's just four, three, two, four, three, two. So you gotta make sure you're lifting that left hand pinky at the end there. And we'll play it together, three, four, Measure 22 is basically impossible. <laughs> it's one of these moments where, Nathan, you're really good, man. Or I'm hearing Jones' guitar, but the thumb pattern alone is, is really tricky in this, the chord, it's because the chord shape is so hard. So we've already seen this chord shape, but we're gonna move it up a fret now. So we got nothing on the top E, right? We're not playing it. Then I got the third fret, then the fourth, then the fifth, so it's that staircase. But remember when I do that one, it's gotta be the pinky. So third, fourth, fifth with the pinky, nothing on the A string, re 
ring finger on the lowest. So we've seen that before. But the problem here is check out this thumb pattern. This is what I'm hearing him do. He's doing six, four, five, four. But when he's doing that fifth string, it's the fifth fret. So I think he's moving that ring finger down. But you're like, oh, that happens in a lot of country songs. Yeah, but not when you have this like complicated melody happening on top. Gah. So here's what we're doing. We're doing six, four, move the ring finger down. Five, four. So those are all fifth frets. I know we kind of do that on the C chord, but just check out this melody. This is what makes it confusing. The top of it, I'm... Well, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> I'm pinching six and two. But when I'm right at the beginning, though, he's stretching that pointer finger to the second fret and he's sliding. So I'm gonna pinch six and two, thumb and middle, and slide that two up to a three. Then my thumb does four and my pointer does three. That's the first half of the measure. Make sure you got that. Really awesome, isn't it? Then I'm, I'm dropping my ring finger down to the A string, the fifth string, and I'm doing Thumb on that fifth string, middle goes back to second, thumb on the fourth, and then I'm lifting the entire chord and hitting open with my pointer on the third. So that second half is pretty easy once you move that ring finger down. It's just five, two, four, three is open. And again, it sounds goofy because that five and that open, they're the same note. So the whole measure together here, if I can get the chord shape down, three, four. You know, sometimes I learn a lot when I teach you guys because now I can play it all of a sudden. Before it seemed like impossible, but now that I explained it to you, my brain had a moment to learn it, right? I always say, learn before you practice. I get eager to show you guys this stuff, so I'm also just like, I'm often just... Well, right, I'm gonna play it, I'm gonna do it, and it's like I haven't even learned it yet, and I'm trying to bring it to you guys. So that is such a valuable lesson. Let's do it slow one more time. Learn before you practice. Three, four. Oh yeah! So guys, I went and got a free haircut. This uh, was a girl in training, gave me a rad mohawk. Uh, so thanks over at, I forget what the place is even called in Lawrenceville and Pittsburgh, Mr. Something, Mr. Barber, I don't know. She was good, so thanks for the haircut, but I was in that barber's chair for an hour and four minutes. It's a long time for a haircut. And I was getting the small talk with the girl, and she mentioned how, you know, barbers need ex thousands of hours, right, before they can get licensed, which is insane. But maybe she was milking that time in the chair, I'm thinking. An hour and four minutes, I mean, come on. You just shaved it, basically. That was a good haircut. If she's watching this, I'm not, I don't mean to tease you, but an hour and four minutes, that's a long, that's a long time to be in the barber ch chair. What am I, like a, a woman on her wedding night getting some fancy haircut? It's just a mohawk. Isn't the whole point of a mohawk that it's like cheap and easy to do? It's kind of like my wife hates it because it looks like I have a mullet in the back from certain angles. Anyway, onward. <laughs> we finally get a break here in measure 23. All we need is uh, the second fret on the third string, second fret on the G string, and we're hammering here. Ah, little breather. So I'm pinching six and, my thumb's just going back and forth the whole time, six and four. I start by pinching six and three, and I hammer on, then my thumb goes to four. But when my thumb goes to four, sorry, it's actually a pinch, four and one. So pinch six and three with the hammer, then pinch four and one. And I'm using thumb pointer, thumb ring. And the end is just six, three, four. Thumb pointer, thumb. <sighs> Measure 24, back to the A chord, but a whole new bag of tricks Nathan gives us. Let's check this out. thumb pattern, right? So it's it starts Travis pick, but because of the melody, his thumb has to do some extra work, which is five, four, four, three. We pinch five and two at the beginning with a hammer on, on the second string. So I'm doing thumb and middle there, and I'm hammering on the third fret. But again, the moment I play my thumb on the fourth string here, I'm pulling off and, and getting a 
pull off there. Sorry, same time, like that. So remember, only playing the thumb. We talked about that, so I'll keep going here. Then I hit the pointer finger on the third string. After that, thumb pull off. at the same time there there's like a it feels like you got a phantom uh, there's a phantom note like a phantom limb you know where's that phantom note coming from <laughs> train the brain to do it right then the second half of the measure I'm hitting the fourth string hammering two to four then I'm doing my thumb on the third string so two thumbs in a row there the hammer on and the thumb again on the third and then I just add the pointer on the second string so it looks like an F sharp minor triad there Got it, whole measure, three, four. Yeah. 25, basically the same as the main theme at the beginning here, but we hammer on at the beginning. So I'm I have that D chord pegged down, we're at the bar, pinching six and two, hammer on, and I'm just brushing with my thumb there. thumb on the fourth string, just brushing more than strings. Then we sing the second half of this measure. It's a cool little run trick, right? So it's six, one, four, and then a quick two, three. And we've seen that before. So 25 and 26, three, four. Now we have the verse again. It's the same kind of idea, but it's the crazy fill part. So um, in the tab, free to download at mikesmusicmethod.com. You're there, right? 25, 26, we're in 27. We've seen that before. I'm sorry, this is so buzzy and annoying. I, I'll, I will make a note to get it fixed this week before the next tutorial. Uh, but 29, check this out. This is awesome and it's all legato and smooth. So spend time getting it smooth. Really beautiful, huh? It sounds like um, whoever uh, Jillian Welsh plays with, right? Her husband or whatever. He does this kind of cool guitar work too. Really, they're both excellent players. So on the A string, the fifth string, I'm hammering two to five. Then on the D string, I'm hammering two to four. Then on the G string, I'm hammering open to two. Two, five, two, four, open two. Then I'm doing open three on the second string. Then after that, and when you do that open three, maybe use your pointer finger, or at least your middle, but pointer's probably best. Because then we're gonna play five on the second string and slide it up to seven. So we got the pointer finger there, it's easier to just get, get down to that 5-7 slide. So 5-7, I let that 7 ring, I put my pointer finger down on the 5th fret of the 1st string. So 5-7 slide, pointer, then I go back and forth. Then the last time I do the 1st string, I slide that 5th fret up to 7. Pretty sweet. Put 29 and 30 together. Three, four. Beautiful. How many players do that? Who does that? I'm loving it. We got some repeat stuff coming up, thankfully. We're in measure 30, and we've seen this before where we got those sevens. Might be a different rhythm, it's thumb. Then I'm doing the big pinch, then thumb, ring, heavy thumb there, or you can pinch it, it's up to you. And I have another realization. Every time in the song where we have that pinch, like that whole opening sequence, I'm just now realizing, feel free to use your middle finger up top, but you can do a heavy thumb, right? You don't have to, you don't have to pinch that, you can do the heavy thumb the whole time. So there we go. I'm always learning too, guys. Then 32 is a little bit different than, than when we were in this part before. We 
we're gonna keep that one pinned down for sure this time. Last time we kind of lifted it to do that cool pull off part. Now we're gonna keep that middle finger pinned. I'm doing six and one, pulling off to five. Thumb alone on the fourth string. Then I'm actually moving that ring finger to the seventh fret of the second string. So I gotta move it up after that pull off. Thumb on four, middle goes to the second string. Then I'm back to thumb on six. Then I do the seventh fret on the third string with my pointer. And then back to the D string thumb. So remember the thumb pattern, just that. Six and one with the pull off. Thumb, back to the, then to the second string. Thumb on six, to the third string with the pointer. Is the verse and the chorus that whole thing repeats we go back to the senyo which was the verse in the tab so the bridge measure 34 we got another classic nathan salzberg roll in here i am gonna steal this technique from this guy i love it so measure 34 just an a bar chord here my thumbs going back and forth simple enough thumb you can do a heavy thumb there or i'm pinching together. Sorry, I'm moving. Can my tabs fit on the screen? Got to pay more attention to that. So I got that, and then I'm doing thumb, then two and three again. Thumb, pinch, thumb, and thumb is what I'm doing there. And again, now that I'm realizing, like, you can do thumb, heavy thumb, thumb, pointer, thumb, and you can brush those top two. Something I should have mentioned earlier in the video, but you can do pinches, two fingers or just brush with one. I think he's pinching. That was my instinct. Has a little bit of a different tone. But you got that down. Then we do the quick roll here. So even though I just played the thumb on the fourth string, I'm going to move my pointer finger to that fourth string. And do pointer middle on the four, three. So one, two, three, four. After that, the reason it's a cool roll is because I'm doing pointer thumb and I'm going right into the pinch in 35. So it's five and two, and you kind of have to use the ring finger. feels attached to other ones and just like never wants to cooperate alone and I'm sure many of you feel the same way. So we'll keep going with this measure here, 35. Beautiful. So we just climb up. It's the five and two pinch. Thumb alone on four. Then I'm gonna put my middle finger down on the third fret and I'm doing second and third string with pointer and middle. Thumb alone and then pinch as I add that third fret onto the second string. To thumb on five, pinch those two again, but I have my pinky down now on the fifth fret of the second string. So that melody is two, three, five. With the thumb in between. So pinch, thumb, and pointer middle. Back to the thumb on five, pointer middle with the pinky down. stuff. Measure 36, another one that, holy cow, did I obsess on it, and I still am uncertain and don't feel totally confident about what the heck is happening here. But close enough. We're real close. I just get a little, little too obsessed. We got a little roll at the end, too. All right, so we've got this weird idea again of three... Um, well, don't worry about that. B basically, I'm doing these two. Let's think this way. I've got the ring finger on five on the lowest string, then my pinky on five on the fourth string. Right, nothing on the fifth. And then my pointer finger is going to be on the third of the second string. And that's where it starts. 
pinching six and two, then thumb alone, which hits the fourth string, sounding that fifth fret. So we got that. But right after I'm doing that, I get the pointer on the third string. And here we have a compound movement coming up. I'm gonna hammer the second fret, which is a big stretch there. Hammering the, the second fret on the third string. But at the same time I hammer, I'm going back to the thumb on the sixth string. because it doesn't seem like it would naturally follow. You can lift up the chord now. And I'm gonna hit open on the fourth string, followed by the pointer finger on the fourth string, then the middle on the third string. Thumb pointer on the same string, the middle on the third. Fourth, fourth, third, fourth, fourth, third, thumb pointer, middle. <laughs> I know, I don't know. Is that what he's doing? I don't know. Sounds like it. Now remember the last two notes um, are quicker, right? They're 16th notes. So three, four. <laughs> 41. <laughs> you think it's familiar territory, but it isn't. We go back to the D. Now one of the reasons I was confused about the previous measure is because usually when he does that quick little roll trick, he ends on like a pinch in the next measure to complete the roll. Here that doesn't happen. So I, I'm not positive about measure 40. But when we go to 41, it's kind of back to like a D chord. But we, we just have to put these two down and I'll tell you why. I'm not gonna bar like we did before. I'm just get doing these two uh, on that D chord. Because we're gonna have to pull off four to open. And again, you can use your ring or your pinky, whatever's easier for you. do this we got thumb on six heavy thumb or you can pinch four and three it's either way then I'm immediately hitting the top string um, and the fourth fret is down now I'm gonna pull off and we got the compound movement the moment I pull off I'm hitting the sixth string second string and again if I'm doing a heavy thumb I'm gonna use my middle finger for that four then I'm gonna use my pointer to get to the second string there then the thumb actually jumps all the way to the third string here and it does a second fret because that's a D chord but then we pull off so the thumb pattern is like six heavy four six three six heavy four Holy cow. Measure 42, we got one more chord change in the song, and then I think we've done all of them. So this is actually an E chord, but again, because it's double drop, it's gonna look a little funny. Think of a normal E major, um, but we're not gonna play the A string, and because it's drop D, we need to make that E two frets higher. So I got an E chord, but I'm just moving my middle finger towards the ceiling. And it's like that. We're not actually playing that high one, so we just have that. Now here, again, we're gonna have to do some busy work with our thumb and move that middle finger. So let's just do the thumb pattern. We've got six, four, bring that ring finger down to the second fret and do five, four, six, four, five, four. Let's add the color now. We're gonna do six, heavy on four. Again, you can pinch it if you want to as well, four and three. Move that finger down, go back to five, and then I'm doing second string open with my middle finger, or pointer, then a heavy thumb again, and 
back to the second string. So six, heavy thumb, five, two, heavy thumb, two. Different styles, your call. At some point, you want to get good at both of them. 42, same chord, he just colors it differently. My hand's getting tired, guys. I need a break. I should have took a break. But I'm super excited to teach you all this song. So, same chord. We are going to pinch six and two. And I'm hammering my pinky, which is a little awkward, onto the second fret of that second string. Then thumb goes back to four. So pinch, hammer, thumb to four, six and two, thumb to four. Then immediately hit the first string. And I'm doing thumb and pointer, thumb, middle. Go back to the sixth string with the thumb. Then I lift my pinky to open on the second string. Thumbs back to four. Pro tip, pro tip number one. Woohoo, four more measures, can it be true? Can it be true? So 44, we're back to an A chord. He's got his little funny roll at the end, so let's do it. We've got, uh, it sounds like this. Freaking awesome, man. Oh, I'm geeking out on this guy's songs. So we got five, pinch four and two, just on an A chord. Go back to five, then I put my middle finger down, third fret on the second string. And I do that second string again. So fifth string, four and two, fifth, back to two, with the third fret down. And thumb on four. Now we need the quick roll. So that means right after I do the thumb, my pointer finger hits the same string that my middle goes underneath it, right? Same little roll trick. does, of course, follow through with the roll this time, and he pinches thumb and ring finger, but he places his pinky down on the fifth fret of the second string, so pinching the A and the B string there with the pinky down. So let's do that, three, four. Freaking awesome, huh? Right at the end there, I'm bringing my pinky up to snag that one. Last moment. Then let's finish 45. Really interesting idea. Pinching five and two with that fifth fret down, thumb alone on four. Then I go to the second string, but it's the third fret there. Thumb middle, thumb back, right back to middle, but the third fret. Thumb back to five here, pinky back up to five, <laughs> uh, fifth fret rather. <laughs> so my, the melody is five, three, five, pinky, middle, pinky, and it's pinch, thumb, and thumb, and thumb. So the thumb pattern is just back and forth, five to four. And then at the very end, we're adding open on the top string. After that bridge, we would go back to yet another verse and chorus, and we'll talk song flow later, but guys, that's it, except for the very final ending. He goes back to that intro part. And does this ending. So let's do measure 47 here, just barring that D chord, we don't need the top string. Six, heavy thumb, or six pinch.
reminding you. And then thumb ends there on four. And then we have the little roll at the end though. So right after we hit that thumb, pointer finger hits the same string. And we can lift the chord here. Middle goes under it. So lift the chord for the roll part. And while I'm lifting the hand and doing that roll, I'm getting ready to finish the roll with a pinch here. I'm doing fifth fret on the lowest string and the second string open. And I have to use my ring finger because I just did pointer middle for the roll. And we want to end it there. So spend time getting that clean. pinch, just thumb alone on four, and I go to a D chord, but he's really just hitting, I mean I guess you can strum there, but he's, the highest note is just the third fret, so open, 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 two, where you can pinch it, last two again, three, four, all right, slow runs let's do the intro two three four Thirteen to eighteen, and then we'll go through the chorus. One, two, three, four. so excited I forgot the verse part with the crazy fill, but worth practicing on its own. So we'll do 27 to 32, two, three, four. Let's do the bridge. This part is hard. Let's take it slow. A lot of tricky passages here. Two, three, four.
And the very ending, just do the last two measures. That's uh, 47 here. Three, four.